Hello and welcome to YouTube Developers Live. We have an exciting show for you today. We'll be talking about social media verification. And I have excellent guests from uh, Storyful today. Let me introduce uh, our guests. Joining us live from New York City, I understand from a cafe someplace, uh, is David Clinch. How are you doing, David? I'm doing great, Yarek. Thanks. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry, in between meetings here in New York, but thanks for having us. Well, we really appreciate that. And then uh, live from Dublin, we have Gavin Sheridan. How are you doing, Gavin? Hello, how's it going? Everything is going good now. And Paul Watson. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Well, thank you very much. My name is Jarek Vilkevich, and I work for YouTube Developer Relations. So let's get into it. Um, I understand that Storyful is the new news agencies in the, in the age of social media. Uh, so uh, David, tell us a little bit more about what your goal is and how did you come up with the idea? Well, yes, I've been a journalist for many years. Our founder and CEO, Mark Little, also a journalist for many years. And along with Gavin and Paul and our team, we created Storyful three years ago to essentially be the news agency of the future. And the key to our uh, goal at Storyful is the discovery and verification of user-generated content. And a significant amount of that content that we supply to the news companies that we work with in the US and all around the world is YouTube video. But again, the key to us is not just discovering it, but making sure that we have the original version and that our news partners have permission and access to use the content. Great. So if I shoot a video of uh, my backyard, which is actually pretty arid since I'm not that good about upkeep and claim that this is from North Africa, you guys are going to be able to actually um, identify it as a fake? Uh, yes, we are, and it's a combination of uh, what we call our human algorithm, which is a combination of our proprietary discovery tools that allow us to tap into every social media platform in real time, and then finally, uh, old-fashioned traditional journalism at the last level to fully verify the content. So we combine real-time technology with real-time journalism to be able to verify and debunk videos from anywhere, anytime. Very interesting. Sounds like the human and the machine working in perfect concert. <laughs> All right. So um, I understand we have a quick video overview of what Storyfy does. So I'm going to ask our producer uh, in the studio here uh, to roll the tape for us. And then after that, we'll talk about some of the technical challenges uh, involved. I'm Maliki Brown, I'm news editor at Storyful. Hurricane Sandy was one of the biggest stories of the year from its timing a week out from the US election to being the biggest storm to hit the US since Katrina. Storyful has built its brand on establishing the veracity of uh, social media content so that news organizations can use it straight away. One of the biggest challenges for newsrooms on a story like Sandy is the sheer volume of user-generated content that's been shared on social platforms. You've got to know who to trust, you've got to know what to trust, um, and how to verify content. At Storyful, you know, we're very mindful of official channels like the National Guard. We know how to doorstep their YouTube accounts so that we get first dibs on the content that they're uploading, and we get to pass that on as trustworthy content to news organizations. We're right over the ramp. At Storyful, our mantra is news from noise. Uh, it's about finding the authentic voices on the ground closest to the story. Uh, it's about finding reputable sources, reputable uploaders of content. And when we find content, making sure that that content is what it says it is. So the building has collapsed here in New York. One of the consequences of the Occupy movement has been growth in this network of citizen journalists who are on the ground in New York and other cities in the US. Fantastic, yeah, I'd be psyched to give you guys the footage. Power's gone down in this section. See, there's some power still up. Winds are getting rough as we get closer to high tide. We at Storyful have built relationships with guys like Tim Poole, who during Sandy went out and filmed the electricity shutting down, floods on the streets. Uh, he gets it to us and we get it out to our news clients. But where Storyful really hits its stride is in finding those gems of videos, that video gold. One example is a great video by a high school student in New York called Matthew Weinschneider. A large tree at the back garden was uprooted, fell down, crashed through the fence and narrowly missed his neighbor's house. Um, and for us, 
We were able to verify the location of the video, find his house on satellite imagery. Uh, we looked at his Google Plus profile, his uh, Facebook profile to have. We were able to identify the shed beside the tree in his back garden and the distance from his back porch to the fence um, uh, to absolutely verify that this was the location where the tree had fallen over. It's a challenge for the likes of YouTube, Google, Facebook and Twitter as well to make it easier for us to separate the news from the noise uh, and find out what's really true. Oh my god! I hate my car! Oh, the car! I got that all on film! Oh. I got that all on film! Oh my god! Fascinating. Um, David, tell us more about uh, this clip. Uh, you know, I understand you were involved in the editorial process as well. Uh, can you tell us a little more about that? Yeah, and in fact, one of the key elements of what we do at Storyful is that we have our journalists and our technologists sitting in the same room at the same time, either in, uh, in Dublin in our main newsroom or virtually through a 24-7 hangout that we use. We are in constant communication editorially around what news stories are happening. But we also have our technologists like Gavin and Paul sitting with us, monitoring our tools that help us with discovery and verification, and literally on some occasions tweaking in real time our search and discovery tools so that we can uh, not just use the tools that we have, but improve them in real time as we approach real stories. So for instance, today we're covering the uh, clashes in Egypt. We have search terms that are going into our discovery platform across every social platform, searching for videos. And uh, at the same time, we have our editorial team, our journalists, looking at what that system brings up and using old fashioned journalism to help verify and get access. So that's where Paul and Gavin can explain to you a little bit more the tools that we use to help discover when there are thousands of videos out there, which are the real ones and which are the original ones. Great. This is a great segue into the technology. I wanted to make a comment that it sounds like a very much an, uh, working for Storyful is very much an adrenaline sport because you guys have to do this in real time as the story is developing, isn't it? Yeah, it's true. And we have three years of experience in doing this. And also, as I said, we're constantly improving our tools. But it is really exciting. In fact, I think it's the, the sharp end of the future of journalism. And uh, we're not just talking about it. We're actually doing it. And you know, in my old days uh, as a journalist, I always wished I had a team of technologists immediately available to help build and improve tools. Mm -hmm. That's what we do at Storm. There's no barrier. Great. So hacks and hackers, right? Yeah. That's us. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about the technology now. Uh, Gavin, Paul, tell us a little more about you know how is your system implemented? How do you actually do this? Yeah. So I mean, it's it's. Pretty, um, there are quite a few different tools and systems that we actually build. It's not one monolithic application. Uh, we have a couple of uh, Ruby processes, which do a lot of HTTP calls, a lot of hitting the YouTube API, and a lot of other APIs. Um, we have a, a Postgres database that stores the majority of it. In that Postgres database, just as a note, we have 70,000 YouTube videos that have been looked at by individual journalists and verified and annotated and context added to them, given titles, dates, locations. We've got 70,000 of these videos that are really high quality mm -hmm. and also cleared and worked with the owners of those videos. Um, and then we have a Ruby on Rails front end for our, our own clients and for our journalists, a sort of a CMS system. And then we have a, uh, a, it's a backbone JavaScript application at the moment, but we're actually moving over to Google's uh, AngularJS as our new uh, front end application development uh, framework. And so together, these all together, these various uh, tools and systems that we built, they really help the journalists just be faster and, and better and let the humans do what they're good at and the computers do what they're good at. Cool. And uh, since this is a YouTube developer's live show, what do you guys use the YouTube API for? Well, first of all, we use it to get the, the video details that you don't always see in the UI, because obviously YouTube.com is quite uh, consumer focused. So mm -hmm. things like location and uh, uploaded date is one of the like the most important pieces of information about a video, but it's not serviced in the YouTube.com uh, UI. So sure. you know, we can like 
Gavin over here, he, he'll use a tool and he'll actually look at the JSON output of their YouTube API to get at the details of the video and then we'll pass it. So that's that's the main way. We also have a tool that goes through all those 70,000 videos and makes sure that they're still live. So at the moment we have 6,000 videos out of those 70,000 that are no longer available on YouTube, but we still have the metadata because we don't store the actual videos, obviously. We need those on YouTube. Sure, sure. So this is uh, an important part of dealing with user-generated content, right? Because it ends up in the user's accounts. Uh, it can be considered ephemeral. Like users have full control over it. They can pull it. They can do whatever. Yeah. Uh, great. So let's uh, talk a little bit more about, uh, you know, is there anything surprising uh, about uh, your product, your system, uh, that you have learned while building it that you're willing to share with our audience? Yeah, I mean, uh, Gavin can actually talk quite a bit about scrapes if he, if he wants to. Yeah, I mean, uh, one of the biggest, I suppose one of our biggest problems is that we'll see a, a, a piece of user-generated content appear on YouTube, and, you know, within 15 minutes, there'll be 10 copies of it. and. That, that, that is the, one of the biggest problems in journalism is, is provenance. So we need to understand who owns the original video, and then we have to kind of track back and find out where did this video originate. Is this the original video, or is it a copy? And that, like, dealing with copies is one of our biggest kind of everyday tasks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I think the other thing is uh, spam or, or sort of very early uploads. So we sort by the newest uploaded date rather than, say, the YouTube uh, UI, which sorts by relevance. So a lot of consumers of YouTube don't see a lot, don't see the spam videos that have been uploaded and which are taken down very quickly by the YouTube's automated systems. But if you're using the API and you're hitting it quite regularly, you're polling it uh, with keywords and accounts, you're actually going to see quite a bit of spam video that you then have to filter out yourself. I see. Great. Well, uh, thanks for sharing that. Um, have you guys tried the YouTube Data API v3 yet? Uh, yeah, we have, but it's not in production yet. We're still exploring, this, especially the entity side of thing, trying to, because a, a lot of videos don't have very good titles or descriptions. So if, if we can get more entity yeah. abstracted over out of them, that's fantastic. But yeah. it's still very long days for us. Yeah, I think uh, for those of you watching, uh, we actually have the Topics API in uh, Data API v3. So we have actually integrated Freebase, and then uh, there are additional annotations available for content. Uh, that you can then query in the Freebase database and, and try to reason about, because these are semantic annotations as opposed to just regular uh, plain text keywords. Um, any um, functionality? Just to add Sorry, go ahead, there, Yara, which is... Sorry, just to add something there, which is very important. When you were talking about metadata, in many cases, the videos that we're discovering have little or no metadata at all. They might be uploaded as video 9 with no location, no other information. And we're discovering them not by actually searching on YouTube, but through a social search, which taps into the mentions and the references to those videos from the people who are at the scene or journalists who are knowledgeable in a particular area like Egypt or Syria mm -hmm. or somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And they're pointing us towards these videos with, with additional context. And really, the only information that we have about the videos exists on other social platforms. So it's very important for us to understand uh, and for news clients to understand that in some cases you will not find the videos by searching on YouTube, yeah. uh, but we can help discover them because they're being referenced on other platforms. At some point later, they may have metadata added, but at the time that they're uploaded, they often don't. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. Sounds like when you think of metadata, it's in the broader context of all the social media signals that you can reason about, and that kind of builds the, the, the metadata in your system about the video. YouTube is just one of the sources. And some of that, the, sometimes the only thing that YouTube will provide is the actual video <laughs> without any other signals, right? But fortunately, you can actually look at a lot more than this. Uh, thank you for sharing that. That's, that's very interesting. Um, is there anything in the API that you guys uh, would like to see that it's not there yet? Any, any wish, things on the wish list? Yeah, streaming APIs, push note APIs, that's that's really, it will help us a lot. Um, we do quite a bit of polling, and uh, the YouTube API is a lot more generous than, say, the Vimeo API. But um, again, if we can get more streams of data, it will fit our use case a lot better. Great. Well, thank you for sharing that. We do have a, a, a quite a bit of work ongoing right now to integrate our asynchronous push notifications into Data API v3. In fact, um, for those of you that attended Google I.O. or watched the videos, there was a presentation uh, by my colleague Jeff Posnick uh, talking about you know, exactly how this is going to work uh, when it's fully rolled out. Uh, we'll post a link to that video, uh, and then we, we hope to have it available soon. 
Well, um, let's switch to the moderator to see if we have received any questions. I see um, uh, there's, there's one question that is uh, relevant, and it's actually from me. Uh, it's about whether uh, YouTube Developer Relations is hiring. And the answer is yes. Uh, we are hiring. Uh, Google Developer Relations is hiring as well. You can learn more at developers.google.com slash jobs. Well, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate you joining us late uh, from Dublin. And thank you, David. I understand he needed to run to the meeting that he alluded to earlier during the show. Uh, real pleasure uh, having you on the show. You're doing some very interesting work. And, and uh, for those of you watching, thank you very much for your time. And we'll see you again live uh, next week on YouTube Developers Live. Bye. Thank you, Jared. Thanks.